This classic small particle view, view of matter shows the basic difference between solids, liquids, and gases. And that is the small particles that compose solids are fixed in space. It doesn't matter if the particles are atoms, molecules, ions. Though we know that solids have a variety of properties from very, very low melting points to very, very high melting points. Some solids are conductors where others are good insulators. So how can we begin to explain these differences in properties that we see in solids? Well, first of all, we need to recognize that there's different types of solids. There are molecular solids, ionic solids, covalent solids, and metallic solids. Take a close look at each one in turn. First of all, metals. There are a large variety of metallic solids, um, including those that are pure elements, such as aluminum and copper, and others that are what we call metal alloys, mixtures of different metals, such as brass, which is a mixture between copper and a small amount of zinc, and bronze, which is a mixture of copper and a small amount of tin. Know that metals, whether they be alloys or pure elements, metallic solids are good conductors of electricity, and they're malleable and ductile. And most metals, not all, have very high melting points. So what microscopic properties of metals lend to these macroscopic properties? Well, metallic solids can be explained as a crystalline structure of cations, which is the core of the metal atom, less uh, one electron, which is freely moving through the metallic crystal. For example, if we think of this model as being silver, each of these cations would be a silver ion fixed in space, and the outer electrons are free to move throughout the crystalline network. This explains both the conductive properties and the ductile and malleable properties of the metals. The cations can be slid past each other in what's called a sea of electrons. This is an image of a sodium chloride crystal. This is an example of an ionic solid. Ionic solids have high melting points because they're held together by strong electrostatic attractions, but many dissolve in polar solvents. Ionic solids, however, unlike metallic solids, are not good conductors of electricity. Rather, they're insulators. Unless the solid is melted, the ionic solid is melted, in which case the um, ions became mobile. This is a classic image of a sodium chloride crystal where this is the anion and this is the cation. And you see that one formula unit of the ion is right here, but when we think of ionic solids, we must think of them in terms of crystalline arrays with each cation surrounded by an anion and each anion surrounded by cations. This very strong electrostatic attraction between the charged charge, um, the negative charge and the positively charged species uh, can explain the high melting points that exist in ionic solids and ionic solids are brittle. They're not malleable or ductile because the electrons are not mobile. This is an example of a covalent solid. This is diamond, which is an allotrope of carbon, and this is graphite, which is another allotrope of carbon. They're both covalent solids, or network solids, and that tells me that they are held together by a network of covalent bonds. These types of solids have very high melting points and normally are not good conductors of electricity because the electrons are fixed in covalent bonds. They're localized rather than delocalized. Graphite, graphite is a unique exception to the rule of being an insulator because of its unique structure. Let's take a look at what we mean by covalent solid. This is the diamond structure and this is the graphite structure. These gray lines indicate covalent bonds. 
you can see between each carbon atom is a covalent bond in this large network solid. So the electrons that make up these bonds are localized in place, which is why this is an incredibly hard substance, very difficult to break um, covalent solids in general. And if you can break them, um, it's very difficult and the electrons are localized. In graphite, you can see the covalent bonds between uh, these carbons, but these uh, carbons are sp2 instead of sp3 um, bonded. And so what happens is then we have a pi network of electrons between these what we call sheets, graphite sheets. So the sheets themselves um, and the substance has a very high uh, melting point, but you can uh, pull and push these sheets uh, across one another, which uh, gives graphite a, the quality of being a good lubricant. And also, graphite's what's in pencil. If you push just with the, your pencil lead, uh, which is actually graphite, not lead, um, you can push off the sheets of graphite and leave them on a piece of paper. But they are not soluble. Um, these types of covalent sol 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 solids typically are not uh, soluble. They have very high melting points. Here's another example of a covalent solid. This is uh, silicon dioxide. And in this example, I wanted to point out that we can have a crystalline form or an amorphous form. Uh, in both cases, they're considered covalent solids. They have very high melt points. They are not good conductors of heat or electricity. The crystalline form has cooled very slowly to form the nice crystal. And glass, here's an example of glass, it's very, very hard. You can't cut it with a pair of scissors, like you could say a thin sheet of a metal. But um, uh, it's brittle, solid, and it is uh, amorphous, and the way it's formed is if it cools very quickly. And so you can uh, make glass from sand by cooling it quickly, or uh, glasses are made in nature if the uh, minerals uh, cool very quickly. Finally, we'll take a look at an example of a molecular solid. Molecular solids are uh, the solid form of molecules. They're held together by intermolecular forces. They are not good conductors of electricity. They typically have very low melting points. So it's nonmetals that are held together as um, in or molecules that are held together by intramolecular forces. Here's an example, uh, a sugar is a classic example of a molecular solid. Uh, we know that sugar is brittle. It exists as a crystalline structure, but it's uh, not held together very tightly. You can smash it up very easily and make powdered sugar. Um, it also dissolves quite readily in the polar solvents. Here's an example of an individual sucrose molecule that would be um, com uh, making um, table sugar. And here are four individual sucrose mole molecules. Within the molecule, the atoms are held together by covalent bonds. That's why we call it a molecule. And you can see the carbon, the oxygen, and the hydrogens here. The hydrogens are white, and the carbon is black, and the oxygen is red in this model. And we have four different models. And you can imagine them coming together close in space and held together by very strong intermolecular forces because these molecules are polar and can undergo hydrogen bonding. So we've got uh, intermolecular forces holding these together. So that's how we distinguish a molecular solid. It's held together by intermolecular forces. And finally, the classic example of a molecular solid is um, water. In this case, we have solid water, which is ice. It's a relatively low melting point. Um, and then this is a micro view of uh, ice. You can see the individual water molecules will align themselves in regular crystalline arrays to maximize the hydrogen bonding, which is modeled here with these little dashed lines. Um, the individual water molecules line up next to each other to maximize the um, distance between the oxygen of one atom and the hydrogen of the other to maximize those hydrogen bonding. So we have four different types of solids that we need to be aware of. Molecular, low melt point, held together by intramolecular forces. Ionic, high melt point, between a cation and an anion. 
not a good conductor of electricity unless the ionic solid is melted. Covalent solids are network solids, very strong, very, very high melt points held together by a network of covalent bonds. The electrons are not localized unless in the case of graphite, which is a unique example. And finally, the metallic where it's high melt point in general and it's they are made of all metals could be the same element or mixtures of elements called alloys they're good conductors of heat and electricity and the electrons are delocalized